From the injury standpoint, a couple updates. Randricus Davis still having some soft tissue issues, but I expect him to be back sometime next week. I've uh, been frustrated for him and in, in, in a tough deal with the groin and a little bit of a ham twinge, but uh, we're working through that. Steven Montak has a stress fracture in his foot. There's nothing surgical required. I'm, you know, we're going to put him in a boot for 10 days and, and uh, reevaluate him at that time. Um, Jalen Dickerson's going to have surgery on his shoulder on Wednesday. Uh, the, the nerve uh, specialist feels like that's the best route to go. He will be aerobic training within three weeks. He will be lifting weights within eight weeks. It's a six-month recovery, so he'll be cleared in January and be ready for spring practice. And uh, hurt for Jalen, he had a wonderful spring and certainly was going to be a contributor to our football team this year. It hurts us, especially in a place where we need some depth and, and a good football player, and that's what he is. But I'm excited about his future as a Gamecock. And DJ Smith's grandfather passed away, and he was not here today. He needed to be with his family, and I certainly understand that situation. We've gotten 11 days in of camp, I think, today. Uh, the, the things you get excited about was, you know, we only had two procedure penalties offensively. Uh, we had one pass interference, and that was it for 140 scrimmage snaps. I mean, we got 50 snaps with our first group, 50 snaps with our second group, and 40 snaps with our third group. It was a good physical day, and that's exactly what we needed. We got about 20 snaps on uh, special teams. We got about 160 snaps out there. We started before 3 o'clock and just got done. Uh, and we needed a long day. We, our guys need to learn to s sustain more. Uh, as far as drives and those things are concerned, on both sides of the ball, uh, good for the defense. We got the ball off some guys today, and bad for offense. We we, we got to we got to do a better job of ball security. Our tempo between each play needs to pick up because obviously we're going to start the season defensively with two teams that are going to tempo us, and I don't know how quickly we're playing right now. So that's something we really need to work on next week is sustaining drives on both sides of the ball. Uh, keeping our mental focus and then uh, and, and taking care of the football offensively and, and our tempo between plays. Those, those are things to me that we really need to work on. But I've been pleased with our work ethic and, and how we've gone about it for 11 days. I don't feel, feel like we've really taken a step back in 11 days. I think that we've taken some steps forward. I'm still concerned about our depth defensively. Um, I do like our first group that we roll out there, but we've got to have some guys continue to step up and, and uh, be more consistent guys. Again, I, I don't think it's ability. I think it's consistency. A lot of that goes to youth, and, uh, and we're sort of working through that right now. But we've got a lot of competition on offense at running back, at tight end, at receiver, and on the offensive line. And uh, it be interesting to watch the tape. I just got off the field, so I haven't seen the tape, and I don't want to make any outlandish comments that, until I watch the tape, and I'll open it up for any questions. Will, you mentioned uh, the Defense's physicality, how we need to get better. How has that been these first 11 days and then today? Well, we've had good contact, and I feel like we're playing blocks much better up front. We're disengaging much better up front. We're sustaining blocks offensively better than we have before. I think we're stronger as a football team. I think a lot of credit goes to Jeff Dillman and his staff. I think the players are playing more confidence because the, the stronger you are, the more endurance you have, the, the more confidence you're going to have as a player. And I see a little of that. There were some really good hits out there today. And for your 11th day of camp when the legs are starting to wear down a little bit, that was good to see. Well, you're talking about uh, looking for a pass rush a couple weeks ago. Have you seen guys step up and, and give you something that you want to see out of that? Well, we're using Bryson Allen more in rush situations. Dennis Wallen's had an outstanding camp. Taylor's been a good matchup inside. Dante moves inside in some of our rabbits package. Um, Aaron Sterling's a young player that's coming around flashing again. I, we, we don't need to get ahead of ourselves on that. I know you guys will run with that. But, uh, but, I, but I do think that those guys have, uh, have responded to our challenges as coaches to improve the four-man rush. How the left tackle on offense play right. out today? Well, you know, right now we've got Malik and Dennis really battling out there. We, we wanted to saturate Sedarius inside at left guard, and both of those guys have had their moments. Uh, but again, I think that uh, that is a position that lacks focus when we get fatigued, and we need to continue to work there. How much are you repping Michael and Jay behind Jake in relation to how many snaps Jake takes during a situation like today? Well, I mean, they Michael rep with our second group the entire day, so he got all 50 of those snaps. And uh, and I and I was extremely pleased with both Mike and Jay. Jay had a one minute drive, I believe Wednesday or Thursday, and I was extremely impressed with the poise that he had and going down the field. And uh, so I've been; those guys have made progress. I mean, I see a lot of progress with those two young men, and I've been pleased with their work ethic and their investment. Any update on Blackshear? Lance said the other day. Well, you know, I'll discuss injuries from now on, okay? And uh, and he's fine. He, he practiced Friday. He practiced today. Okay. How did Jake look out there to you? I, I thought he looked good. I mean, we uh, you know, the defense came out and got a three and out to start off the scrimmage, which is good to create that momentum. He had a beautiful wheel route to Hayden. He did a nice job on the check down on a couple situational work things that I was impressed with. I think he continues to progress in his knowledge of what we do and how we do it. We need to pick up our tempo offensively, and that's on both sides of the ball. Zach Bailey still looks like 
At this time, you know, Blake Camper's obviously rep there, and we think right now Malik could play right or left tackle, so we still have competition at the job. Will Shaw Smith's been getting a lot of pop mm -hmm. from the other players. Sure. How has he looked during these first I uh, made some plays today. We missed him on a, on, a, on an inside fade route uh, that was a well-thrown ball, just a little bit long. Um, but he's a, he's an electric guy that can make plays with the ball in hands. Or Trey caught the ball well today and has given his opportunities and, and continues to progress. And we need those guys to continue to come on. You know, Brian Edwards has had a fantastic camp. Debo Samuel has had a great camp. Uh, but we got to have more dependable guys. Terry Googer is a very dependable player for us. We need more guys to step up at the position. What did you see from Sidarius that made you think guard was kind of the, the spot? Well, I think he could play both, but I feel like he was the more apt to move inside. He's a, he's more of a girth guy that can get movement on the inside zone. And uh, we need guys that can get more movement inside for us. How much of Debo's camp has been about putting him in different spots and figuring out different ways to get him the ball? It's not about plays. It's about players and put him in different spots and let's get him the ball. But DJ, Debo's extremely bright. He's extremely intelligent. He can play outside. He can play inside. He can play running back. He can do a lot of different things for us. To see him at all of those spots this year at some time? 100%. The more you put him in different spots, the, the harder it is to defend. Does, Shy, does Shy's development help that, or is, are they independent of each other? Well, I think Shy's development helps us put, put more speed on the field, and anytime you get more speed on the field, you can threaten the defense better. What did you see in all aspects of your kicking game snapping, holding, oh, yeah. kicking, punting? Uh, Alex Wozniak hit a 52 yard and, and was, would have been good from 60. Uh, he did miss one in our field goal when we rotated the, the field goal kickers around. Parker White hit a 37-yarder to end the scrimmage, which was a positive. Parker's done very well. He's kicked off extremely well. Um, so uh, both guys, I have a lot of confidence in both of those guys. As Parker's our kickoff guy, Joseph Charlton and Michael Allman, both have punted extremely well. Joseph's been more con consistent than he's been since I've been here. And uh, we got to continue to progress with that. And uh, Ben Osbury's kind of distanced himself as far as the snapping job is concerned. Well, you were concerned coming into camp about the depth at the linebacker. Yeah, have you seen those guys take a step forward? I, I have. I mean, I think Sky's having a great camp. I think uh, 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 TJ Brunson's having a very good camp. Uh, Sherrod Green is going to be a really, really good football player. But it's everything's an, it's a new first day every day. So it's a that's what sort of the process you go through. And Eldridge Thompson in the last three or four practices has come on to be the guy we saw on tape and playing a little bit faster and quit worrying about making a mistake and just go make a play. And that's where you know we got to continue to progress there. But those guys along with Bryson, you got five guys that we, we have confidence in, two guys that just have never played before. Is anybody ahead of the game as far as the three running backs go? Are they all pretty equal, or is it? Well, he, and, you know, we had one on the ground today that from the running back position we can't afford to have happen. So we got to continue to coach through that. But I think all three guys have, uh, you know, Tyson and Rico are very similar running style, and AJ gives us a little bit of a different style that we we need to get the ball in AJ's hands as well. Well, how comforting is it to have a healthy Allen not out there, not to worry about that thumb? Well, again, to be have a 12 months of lifting to me, David, is the key. I mean, you know, it's, you know, same with Corey as far as the health is concerned. I mean, that people won't always understand those things, but I know one thing: those are two tough dudes, and they're going to fight for the Gamecocks, and they're going to play well for us this year. But, you know, Allen's a, a very dependable player. Corey's our we could be our backup center if something were to happen there, and that's probably what the, we would do. Um, but I'm glad both those guys are in South Carolina uniforms. We know that uh, there are going to be some different faces on defense this year. What are you looking for to determine who those faces are? To me, just dependable play. I mean, can we depend on you? Can we count on you? When you get fatigued, when you get tired, are you going to do your job at a high level and not let your teammates down? And that, that to me, is what defines you as a player. And we got to find more and more guys that we can count on and put in the game and understand that they're going to play at a high level and a high tempo and understand how we're going to play defense here at South Carolina. You mentioned uh, the procedure penalties. Uh, sort of at this juncture in camp, are there any other kind of big sort of indicator things that you can say this kind of shows the progress overall as a team? Well, I think more than anything, we, we the, the procedure penalties both happen late in the scrimmage. So that's lack of focus and, and lack of tempo and lack of concentration of the situation. So they have a playcock for a reason. Mm -hmm. So that means get it off before it goes off. So it's kind of a neat deal. Um, so those, those are things to me that we – as coaches, we can do a better job, number one, from my spot in emphasizing, and we will. How are you feeling about your corners and, and maybe their improvement in their coverage skills? Rashad Fenton's had a good camp. Chris Lamont has been playing mostly safety but could play corner right now and would be one of our top two corners. Jamarcus King has, needs to be more consistent. Uh, the two young corners are going to be really good players, Jam Williams and Taven Jackson. What have you seen from Chris at safety this, this camp, and then what have you liked on 
Keyshawn Nixon. Consistent. Well, we're trying to create depth on our football teams. It's not about putting the next guy in. It's putting the next best guy in. So Chris is obviously going to be one of our best five. So we need to be able, be able to put him in situations where he can play nickel corner safety. He's extremely bright. Uh, Keyshawn Nixon, we've tried to saturate him mostly at the safety position. And I think the last three or four days, the light's gone off for him a little bit. I'm, I'm, I'm anxious to watch the film to see how he performed today uh, on his own. The coaches were off the field. We didn't help him and, and um, you know, help him get lined up like we do at practice every day. So so that was that was positive. Do you see those young corners play a lot? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, has Chris Smith been repping any of the, one of those DB spots? Hey, Chris has been injured at this time and, and, um, and hadn't been in practice much. Think he'll be back this year? I'm not sure right now. I'll be able to answer that more next week. Coach, what are you seeing out of Hayden right now? What's his ceiling compared to his play last season? Well, I think the game slows down for you the more snaps you take. It was a, all that was brand new for him. He's like being a true freshman. You know, he'd been been riding a baseball bus for a long time, and then all of a sudden he's thrust into action as a wide receiver his first year, and then he's going to playing tight end and blocking 270 pound defensive ends, Derek Barnett and guys like that. So that's a little different. So again, the game slows down for him. Uh, he's extremely hard working, but his his biggest talent to me is his competitive edge. Uh, he guy competes when he goes out and plays, gets on the field, whether it's practice, whether it's a scrimmage, or it's a game, and you're gonna see the same Hayden every time. Anything different out of Jake in a scrimmage situation as opposed to last spring? Uh, well, no, yeah, more command and overall knowledge, getting people lined up, redirecting the protection. I mean, it's a it's a different player at quarterback right now as far as his knowledge of what we do and what we need to be successful with. Mm -hmm. A typical first to second year jump for him. Well, I would hope so, and continue to do so. You know, I think he's a calming influence on our offense as far as, you know, getting a receiver on or off the ball, getting a tight end in the right spot, redirecting the protection, changing the run. We're putting a lot on his plate, and deservedly so. Will any update on Jordan Gardy? Um, not at this time, but we still feel very comfortable. It's going to—he'll be here for the start of school. Mm -hmm. What, so, if anything, as far as he interrupted them? I'm sorry. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> he, he gets pissy. <laughs> also, um, uh, what is Coach Wolford? brought to this offensive line and into the team? Well, I think that, you know, I think obviously being a head coach um, and, and being in the National Football League for two years where all you do is ball. There's no recruiting. You know, you have a scouting office that's doing all that for you. So all you do is study football and then having to find answers for exotic pressures on third down. And, and, and I think he's offered a lot of experience to our offensive staff and to our coaching staff. And he's been a tremendous asset to me from a standpoint of having sat in the seat before. And that's important. And that's, I certainly bounce ideas off him and talk to him about things. What, if anything, have you been able to put on Jake's plate that you couldn't do last year? Well, I think that there's a lot, and it, it's not just because of Jake. It's because of the people around him. You know, now we have experience at the running back position. We have experience at the receiver position. We have experience at the tight end position. We've got year two with our offensive line. So there's a lot more that we can do, and it's not only because of Jake Bentley, but it's because of also the experience snaps around him. How about depth on the offensive line? Do you have eight guys right now you feel good about? Well, I think right now, you know, you're repping at the tackle position, regardless of who's going to be the starter. But you got Zach and Blake, and you got uh, Malik and, and uh, Dennis. So, you know, those guys, and Malik can be a swing guy and play on both sides of the ball. Donnell Stanley's having a really good camp for us at left guard. And so Darius is a guy that we think's got a tremendous upside. He's a red shirt freshman. <laughs> And we got to keep remembering that kind of stuff. It's not add water, instant player. It, sometimes it takes a little development, but that's not the society that we live in. DJ Park and, and, uh, and Corey have been playing right guard, and uh, Chandler Farrell continues to do some good things at center. The Eric Douglas is a young player we think has got a chance at center. And obviously right now Corey would be our backup center if something happened with Allen. So you know, to be able to have those guys continue to progress, um, we do. Jordan Rhodes is a guy we're excited about as a young player. Now, how, well, how will he figure in this year? Probably not. But he's a guy that we're excited about and we think is going to be a really good player. What did Dennis show you in the last week or so that allowed you to put him in a position to be the guy mm -hmm. who left tackle? Well, I think athletically, his movement skills at 330 pounds, the length that he has, um, <sighs> all of those things, you know, to me, it's so, so much in that left tackle position is dependability. And uh, we've got to continue to work with him, with Malik, and, and multiple guys, uh, you know, as far as those, those things are concerned. How do you feel about the, your tackles versus the, the defensive ends you're going to see against NC State? I mean, you like a oh. good matchup? Well, I mean, <laughs> they're good. I know that, you know. So at the end of the day, we're worried about South Carolina right now, and, and that's who we're working on. How, how are the guys in the return game? Competition, uh, how's that shaking? Well, I think right now as a kickoff return uh, unit, we would have uh, Debo and A.J. Turner would be the two guys that would go back. Tyson could go back as an off returner. 
Uh, Rashad Fenton obviously is a guy that, that could do it and has done it at a high level before. Punt returns right now would probably be between Chris Lamonts, uh, uh, Jam Williams, and Sha Smith. Those three have uh, done the best job of securing the ball, and that's been obviously an issue. All right, thank you. Thank you.